Hey, it's Travis with T-Customs Productions, tcustoms.com. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining and demonstrating a really useful and sometimes overlooked production technique for both sample-based and non-sample-based producers to play a single sample or a single sound from your sound collection as a virtual instrument. So what I mean by that is taking a single isolated note and being able to spread that across your keyboard or whatever controller you're using and play it the same way you would play a patch in one of your go-to virtual instruments. For example, you may have lifted a really unique sample from a record or found another unique sound in a sample pack or sound kit, but you're limited to that sound in just a finite audio format. What if you want to take that and play your own melody or create your own chords? So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to demonstrate a direct example. This is a session that I'm currently working on. Uh, this is this yellow track. The lead track is the one we're going to focus on, the one we'll be applying this technique to. The rest of these are just my secondary instrumental and drum tracks. If you are using Ableton Live, you can follow along with what I'm doing here. If you're using another program or plugins, you have access to different resources, you can still take this concept and apply it to whatever you're using. So first, before we jump into the technique, I'm gonna give you some context of what we're working with. I'm gonna play back the lead synth soloed first and then play it with the beat. Okay, so the lead synth that we're working with here is actually pulled from a sample pack. You can see that I've isolated about the first two and a half seconds of this sound. It actually goes on for about 10, 11 seconds or so. Now I'm going to recreate how I achieve this in Ableton Live and turn this single sample into a playable instrument. All you need to get started with this is a new instance of a sampler instrument. That's going to be doing the grunt work for this technique. Next, you just need to drag whatever sample you want to use into the sampler instrument. And first off, I'll just play you back what this full sample sounds like. So I like the sound, but I don't want to use this melody. I don't want to chop it up traditionally. I want to have more control. I want to be able to even play chords. I want to do more with this sound. So I'm going to try to trim back this sample, bring back this end marker to find exactly where that, that first note ends. So it's somewhere in there. So at this point, the sampler is already working. I have that single note isolated. I can already start playing chords, play my own melody. What the sampler does is it puts whatever sample that you loaded in as the root, that would be middle C, and then it's gonna incrementally transpose that note as you go up and transpose it down as you go down the keyboard. Now the transpose, one thing to keep in mind with that is as it increases the pitch, it also increases the tempo and vice versa. So the higher you go, the shorter the note is gonna become. So we want to eliminate this limitation. Again, we don't want to have to worry about the sample cutting off at a certain point. We want to play this like we would play a regular patch in a virtual instrument and just have a continuous sound playing until we release the keys. The easiest way to achieve this in the Ableton sampler is through the sustain mode. I'm going to be using the third sustain mode option, which is called back and forth. When you click that, it's going to enable this, this loop region. This is your start point. The end of this loop will actually serve as your end point, but this will be the region that's actually looped if the sample plays longer than its original time. So now I just need to play back the sample and fine tune the starting and end points for the loop region to make sure it sounds like one continuous sound. So this is a pretty good start. You probably noticed some prominent clicks at the beginning and the end of this sample. This can very easily be fixed by the crossfade option. 
Uh, so if you just click and drag up, this will enable a fade at the beginning and the end of the loop region. Keep in mind, if your loop region starts at the very beginning of the sample, you see how the crossfade went away? Uh, so you need to actually have a loop region that's offset from the beginning start of the sample. And because this kind of fades in anyway, I really want to get the meat of this track to kind of loop back on itself or the meat of this sample to loop back on itself to get a more streamlined sound. So again, I just need to play this back slowly, adjust these settings and try to fine tune this. So once you're happy with this, you can save the preset and that way you can load this sound, this patch into another session that you may be working on. And you just do that by clicking the uh, save preset button in the top right hand corner. That will prompt you to name this uh, sampler, whatever you want. One last important thing to consider before you save the preset is the actual key of the sample you dropped into the sampler. By default, the sampler puts your original sample in the root key of C3, which is middle C. The problem in this case is that it's actually the key of G. This sample, the original sample key is G. And so in order to easily fix this, all I do is change the root key. So you just change the root key to whatever the key of the sound that you're using. And I could take it up to G3 or I could take it down to G2. It's just going to change the octave. So now when I play a G, I'm actually playing a G. When I play a C, I'm actually playing a C. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you're looking for something specific, other tutorial videos, Ableton Live, music production tips, whatever it is, everything is categorized in playlists on the channel, so feel free to check that out. Thanks again for watching and happy beat making.